get reworked. I'm, I will be excited to see that eventually in a land far, far away. But not, not here, not today. And that means that coming up for our second pick is going to be Sky Temple. Yeah. Supernova after dropping game one, they're not gonna, they're not going to try anything fishy. They tried the first one, but it's better to have when you don't get to lose your first ban too. Uh, Maybe it's a better idea to have that first pick. That hurt uh, a little bit. It was cool to watch the shattering animation on the ban, but probably not so cool to have that happen to you in game. What's happening? Why are we back on camera so many times? Well, we had to show off our brand new shirts. Uh, just kidding. These are not brand new shirts. but They do detract away from our uh, ravishing good looks. So I think it, uh, you know, it balances everything out. I think uh, they take too much attention. Uh, maybe our shirts we, are yeah. pretty cool, but maybe it's uh, time for new shirts. I, I would love that. I don't know. Somebody saw a picture of uh, the shirts I normally wear and were like, no, 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 we have to make it like this so that he doesn't get too crazy. I, I will always offer to bring my own wardrobe, but I don't think anybody wants to see that on air. I, I'm too lazy uh, to bring my own. One of these days, they'll let us just catch cast in like our pajama T-shirts and stuff. We could have a oh pajama party. Heroes oh. pajama HGC. of the storm. Oh. <laughs> how, how great would that be? Whoa! Like all night slumber party? Yes. Yeah, we could do that. We could have like a joint like English Korea casters just like all get together and hang out with Heroes of the Storm. I'll pitch that as like a a great idea. That and we'll you'll be the target on the pillow fight. <laughs> It'll be the first. One I will gone. not survive. I will pop pillows, man. <laughs> like when I have, you know, those people when they go into the car when they have the when they have when they grab onto the handle handle oh, they yeah, suddenly yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me on the pillows. Man. <laughs> My no eyes mercy. turn red. I become an orc. I'm a horde, <laughs> and then I go for the whole. Go you get, get bloodlusted. Alliance, right? Yeah, Bam. That's right. I say I'm alliance. I've actually uh. Not had extensive experience there, but when there was that uh, Heroes of the Storm event, that's what I picked. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're not friends. I, I still have my little... Actually, I still have to turn it around there. All right, there we go. Okay, thanks. My now little can, talisman. Now I can see the horde. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad that's there for you. So we're still not totally uh, exactly sure about uh, what is going on. We're going to have to take a uh, brief moment to regale you with our... Uh, yeah, that was too much action. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we had too many strange picks. They need to re-prepare the overlays because they're not sure if maybe we're going to get some brand new uh, heroes coming through. I don't know what to expect next. You know, I come in here and I think I know what to expect from the matchups, right? And then teams win that you wouldn't expect and the scores are different. I'm like, wait a second, what's going on? And then all these crazy heroes get picked. We have Braxis for the first time in a million years. Yes. What? changes next G Clef. You were the one that predicted the uh, the Chogal, so yes, I know I could I could feel it. <laughs> and and from the first two picks, oh yes, this is totally happening. Yeah, I can read everything. I know can all you? the players. I know what they do in their I I, I watch a lot of their streaming as ah, well. Okay. So I know what each player is like to play personally uh, personally on their stream or Hero League or in H G C it's quite different. And sometimes it comes to the time when it went on the like like the last game. Yeah. They always go back to their favorite one, Whoa, like the comfort like blue, picks. Like Blue Beetle always playing Stukov. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, and SCSC always 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 playing Hanzo, something like that. And, and SCSC actually bar barely ever ever plays Phoenix on his Hero League. He would always pick something else. Even a gas look comes up, but not Phoenix. They 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 get in their team meeting. And they're like, all right, we need you to play not just any Phoenix, but backdoor split push Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And he's like. Wait a second, is that a thing? And it turns out it is. So, I guess there's a first time for everything. So, we are going to get into game number two of Ballistics versus Supernova. And even though there's one win on the board, Ballistics specifically cannot, uh, you know, rest too easily. I think they can continue the same. Maybe stealing away because this time, uh, if Supernova gets their hand on the Dehaka, it will be back on Kirisan. The last time there was uh, yeah. a minor role change because of that Chogao Braxis too late map and all that. I think there was definitely a, a big difference there. Uh, you know, Kirisaku, he does get kind of... Uh, I feel like he is the best player I see lose lane. Uh, or in whatever individual matchup. But he does bring it back in the end really, really well. So, something to keep an eye on. Let's go ahead and take a look at Draft First Ban Genji and then a new Barak taken off the board. Because of the Barak is quite scary. There are a few other ones. And I'm talking about the DPS. 
And other than DPS, Diablo's quite up there. Yeah. Uh, uh, we Hooligan, does, Hooligan does play lots of Diablo, but they rather ban Anubarak, which is kind of fishy in this case. Yeah, I, I think last week I was watching uh, a, a new bro or a Diablo be picked first picked over something like a Deckard, which is just so high priority. Oh, and look at Supernova, they are really a big believer in this rework. And I see Tirande, I'm putting down Tyrael because it's been a while I wrote down <laughs> Tirande last the time. Autocorrect. Yeah, autocorrect. It's getting ya. It's like, well, what other T? Well, I guess there are other T heroes, but uh, yeah. I First picked, I don't know if it's quite that high enough priority. Would Ballistics really pick that away from them? I don't know. Maybe they don't want to give their first pick away. That's not really how first pick works, but I'm just trying to think why they would prioritize that so highly. Maybe Alex is... Maybe Tiranda is new personal favorite. I don't think Tiranda is that high of a support right now. Against Deckard. His secret Smurf account is XX Tiranda God XX. Maybe. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, it didn't really work uh, outstandingly in Game 1. Uh, we'll get a chance to see it on a brand new uh, Battleground. And here, we do get a chance to see the uh, Diablo that you were talking about. This is up against uh, Muradin as far as tanks go. Yeah, usually it was just first pick Diablo, but we... And then for a counter, we would have something like Mardale, uh Tychus and all that. So, after getting one Hanzo, because with just an Hanzo, Maxed out Soul Diablo, pretty hard to kill. Right. So that's why they pick it later. I don't know if it's exactly that Tyrande belongs that first pick. I think Deckard still is on the top support level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, that's why they're scared of that. They banned it out. Yeah, don't want to give that through. Still plenty of very strong supports uh, options available. I mean, obviously White Mane's still out there, but not something up. Uh, ah, my crystal ball is here as well. Not that big a prediction, though. It's uh, super popular nowadays. And, you know, sometimes uh, you actually see a team start to uh, punish uh, early Blaze pickups. I think last week we got a chance to see several Malthiels come out as just a way to really dominate that lane. And uh, we did see lane domination, but not quite in the way I'm used to watching it happen uh, in Game 1. Oh, double global locked in at the end for Supernova. But that's what they were waiting on. And that's, once again, double global. Okay, let's put it down. They have a very bad rhythm rate of one, uh, zero and four in Korea. But I'm talking about Fox and Dehaka only. Zero when they are four. on the same team. And oftentimes they are on the lower, lower tier of the teams in terms of the standings in Korea. But still their double global was not really working on perfectly. And here we go, we have the Tychus. It was basically coming out because they banned Deckard. Kind of ban out Magi's hero pool, but mm. White Mane is around because they had Tyrande, which was kind of was kind of a surprise. Yeah, continuing from game one. So yeah. here's the thing: double global. What you're trying to do is to you have an off lane solo lane from the opponent. You just use that double global fly, uh, flight and also the brush stalker. Try to gank on them, get a kill. If that happens twice or uh, twice or more times in the first six seven minutes of the game, great, your game is working out for you. Yeah. But once it goes past that moment, if you're not controlling the macro, it just does not work. And we've seen that over and over again. Let's see if they can do something else. Yeah, absolutely. Macro is something that a lot of the uh, you know lower teams in uh, HGC Korea really struggle with. And against a team like Ballistics, who's very good at that, maybe not the best, but still very solid, it's interesting to see Supernova try to kind of beat them at what is kind of their own game. But it's still a very unique kind of style to play here against one of the best teams in HGC Korea. And even though, uh, you know, maybe they are coming off, or uh, Ballistics are coming off of a very strong win over Tempest, they did fall to Miracle just the week before. So still not a flawless performance this part by any means. So for that, Ballistics... Their rotation has to be really carefully carried out. Right. Never really face check. And when you hear the Haka, you just have to be near your tank or or that blaze all the time. You do not want to be by yourself. The uh, pause coming through. That is. Not, right now, I do not want to be by myself. <laughs> I need you, Rapid. That's right. It's good that I am here. You did threaten to walk out the other uh, a few minutes ago when I changed the horde icon to an alliance one. But I'm glad you stuck around. Uh, see if we can figure out exactly what the issue is. Looks like uh, might have a small issue with uh, sound on Supernova. But 
Wait to get confirmation from that. Hopefully be able to get back into the game pretty quickly. Yeah, he looks a little better with the headset like that. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, need a couple of like, Insta filters. I want one that makes me look like that. I can I can be a pro gamer with my headset off. <laughs> That'll be the next one. Okay. I can already look like like a Santa's reindeer, like a pig sliding down a cliff. I saw one of those the other day. I'm like, why why would anybody use that? No, I need I need that one. But. What about that fancy keyword though? LED light link. It doesn't have the breathing option on it. It seems. Yeah, it also doesn't have the like the multicolored keys. The LED, the well, it's, RGB. It's got one. RGB, but they don't have like the colored key caps. Like that, that's what it's all about. I tell you, man. Some of these, uh, I think specifically, who is it? It's uh, is it Rich that has the colored keyboard? The, a lot of Blossom members have the. Color ah, one. yeah, that's right. The pink and the blue, I think. Very photogenic. Yes, very Lots fancy. of pastels. Very fancy ones. I like the ones where they turn their RGB so that it. it Cascades lights across the keyboard yes. every time they press a key. That's my Corsair. Ah, okay. A few weeks ago. Yes, RGB for the win. Oh, I'm a big fan of all the mechanical keyboards and the keycaps. You like to pretend that you're at a rave while you're playing your. Uh... So it was all black, but I, I removed all of them and replaced with the white. Ones. Ah. And they're only you're so fancy, on the side. If, so if we cool. could let G Clef wear an RGB caster shirt, he absolutely would. Yeah all the time, but issue has been fixed. I don't know exactly what it was, but let's get into game. Yeah, and we already have our lane assignments. We kind of skipped the uh, the early 5v5. And, uh, oh, wow. Hooligan. Surprise, surprise, Sheeklef. We look down to a lane and Hooligan's about to die. Something's never changed. Oh, well, Phoenix was getting a lot of damage at the bottom yeah. as well. But I don't think we missed too much action. Yeah. Still want to see uh, if this Tyrande was worth the first pick. You really do have to have a lot of faith uh, in that to take a hero fresh off of a rework and bring it back. Obviously, when that happened uh, with Raynor, it was a little bit different because his rework was very polarizing. It was just very, very strong. Um, but I don't think anybody would just look at the Tyrande rework because it was more just like a readjustment, a lot of the skills being kind of switched around and changed up a little bit. Um, so I still don't know exactly what to think about it, but it's safe to say that Supernova are big believers. Yep, and looking at the team comp, I mean, once he has his max soul, it will be pretty, pretty dangerous. But it's actually not that bad. Let's see, the chain stun is there. Yeah. But he's aborted. There's a toss. So when you have a Tyrande, you base once your tank, like the power slide or the charge, you throw the bomb over. As long as you have the teamwork, you have the, that chain yeah. of CC happening all the time. But you need the damage to be... Well, and you need the damage on the hero to act actually get the kill. Yeah, it's not enough to have the chain CC. And there is always that like overpower combo with Diablo, right? You flip them over, you know exactly where they're going to be. Chain Sun comes through uh, from Tyrande. It's like, okay, well, that's cool. But you actually do need to be able to kill them. So. We'll see, and also something to keep in mind, you know, we're only about three minutes into the game, but we still have yet to really see that double global fully kick in uh, to high gear. And that is kind of on a timer like we were talking about. There's the overpower onto Jungha, does have to get out of there very, very quickly. Jet Propulsion to save his life, but still, I, I like that Supernova are looking for those opportunities. They just haven't been able to make it work yet. It's going to be a tough one for Supernova basically to get some maximum drag plus the Diablo combo on Hanzo. And then they can probably look for a kill because Diablo, as a Diablo, you can actually just get solo kill post 16 on the Hanzo. It's actually really hard to get escape from that as well. Mm -hmm. and you have to have that maximum damage along with Phoenix and Falstad to kind of kill starting from Blaze, Tigers, and Hooligan. So they're off to a pretty tough situation here where their mission is pretty hard to beat all the time. Tryna poking out with Sentinel now moving down, but still not going to contest Temple just yet. There is the overpower, the combo onto Hooligan, but once again, he's Muradin. Totally able to toss out back to safety. I mean, the push is still very scary with the Night Camp pushing through, but like, what? Are, how are you going to stop this? Still has Haka up there getting all the shots, and it would be lovely if they can actually do some more damage. They know the rotation from Jungha is coming. Yeah, they're really pulling out everything, realizing, hey, we actually just need to hold this off. And 
With those final shots coming through, it's not enough to take the fort out, but still even on both sides, using the Dahaka well. And they do have the double global. As long as they're careful enough on it, should be fine. But the thing is, Ballistics, they're really good at not losing the wave too much. Look at that. I believe he only missed one. Even though he rotated down about 15 seconds after. Ball yeah. was already there before. He was clearing mid and then he went bottom. And Tychus came all the way from top. But they didn't really miss too much. Yeah, and still, I, the experience advantage, right? Usually when you have uh, globals on your team, that gives you the opportunity to stay in the lane longer. So theoretically, you should have some of that from somewhere. But no, it's actually a higher XP for Ballistics. So we'll see if that continues as the game goes on. Still waiting for those double globals to be used. Now you can see they're looking for it. Yeah. So this is going to require very, very safe blaze play because you know that you are going to be uh, a potentially vulnerable target. But still don't have really any uh, any setup just yet. No chat chilling in the mid lane, not really looking to rotate and use that global. Page. Yeah, no chat needs to get those stacks, and once he does, he'll be doing a lot more. Baby. Just the maybe because they can lock up so much. Like a single target with lots of crowd control. Kindle and blast. I'm thinking about it, and if it's no <laughs> chat, I think it's actually possible. We, we've seen him do it before. Uh, last uh, last part, I think you and I long were casting that. Time ago. It was a long time ago. But it was still there, and now you have the opportunity to not only go Hinterland Blast, but also Planet Cracker. So everything in one line just dies. Yes. It doesn't do the maximum damage, but if you hit a lot, you can use it again. Basically. You get cooldown reduction from the from each hero hit. So I've seen it happen just, just a few days ago. It was an event match, but after he used it, the cooldown was on 20 seconds. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And it was on this map too. Why don't we see that more often? Well, very situational, of course. So now control of only the bottom temple being fought over. Once again, a hooligan in a rough spot, but does get out. There's a Gust, hits him back into the lightning breath. Lots of damage coming yeah, through. Yeah, he does they... have the avatar, so he was not really in, in a threat. He was actually trying to bait into the position where Ballistics can actually push a little bit more. Yeah, and that's a lot of heroics used. We do still have Bentham in a bad spot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that Sonic Arrow almost picked him off. But Bentham survives safely back to the back. Bunker used. Gonna give them a staging area, but when all is said and done, you know, Bentham's gonna be able to heal back up and Supernova can mount another attack. Yeah, because not just because they have the other great cleanser coming out. Yeah. He does have the agility so you can go over the wall. But Supernova, they already got half of the temple, so even yeah. though they lose the rest of it, it's not too bad. Unless they get picks, which will they which they would love to. They control the global as well. So might as well just escape the fight and control the macro from now on. Yeah, and because the ballistics are controlling the lane back above, there's nobody to keep Hooligan off of that point. They control the temple for its full duration. That is a lot of structure damage in ballistics advantage. And when Supernova, when they want to try to target onto one, as long as white main is nearby the range where she can actually put out that heal, it's going to be very tough. It is very tough. A white main has semi burst healing. It consumes a lot of mana, but with the right Inquisition, right. Like Inquisitor timing, you can actually just reset that. What is it called? Desperation again? Yes. yes. You get those stacks, which is a lot of mana, but as long as you have mana control, you're good. And you can put out yeah. burst output. Yeah, and uh, you know when you're inquisiting, uh, your zeal is also still healing the guy. So it's just like you just get so much healing there. And I think. Uh, players are really starting to figure out uh, exactly just how crazy that can be when you time everything correctly. So, one of the reasons that White Main is so popular, see if that burst healing is good enough. And it has been all game long, right? We just see Muradin go into like some of the craziest, terrible situations, and Hooligan always makes it out alive. No Chad, almost kind of getting burst there. Takes a big uh, scatter arrow and has to back off, but. Not anything you won't be able to heal back through. And uh, G-Clef, we are about eight and a half minutes in. Where's those double globals? Well, Dehaka is there. I think No Chess here to as, as those extra siege damage plus when they are actually dove on by ballistics to disengage with the Mighty Gus. It's okay. actually not a bad option when they are not really controlling too much. 
And when they have, well, I mean, when they have not too many things to control. Yeah, to not, keep them safe. Not the way that you expected, but yeah, definitely a good disengage tool if that's uh, what you need. I'm glad we have this picture in picture so that at least Kurosaku gets some screen time. Because usually <laughs> there's not a whole lot to talk about in the uh, Diablo versus Blaze, or in the uh, uh, Daka versus Blaze matchup. But even with that nice evasion on him. Look at that healing on the jungle. He had the Back new habits. He had the new unstoppable talent. Then. One. He had enough gloves, so he's gonna be fine. So that's the thing. Well, maybe if Phoenix was there, they had a little bit more damage, but we're going to have that moment over and over again. Once again, Hooligan there to start the fight and just kind of bait anything out that he can. Does take quite a bit of damage. Salvo's gonna come through there. Not all that much damage and a good bunker. And really set things up, but it doesn't look like Ballistics are really too willing to push in onto this temple. They are, they are already controlling the bot with Hanza. So it's not bad of a trade for Ballistic when they can actually do boss really fast with the W Hanzo here scattered. There's the Odin. They yeah. want to commit onto this. There's the arrow and full damage from the Odin. Alex is half HP, but Diablo trying to turn that around, but no salvo to connect with the slow. Yeah, and bet them had to warp out almost immediately. And the same situation for Alex and No Chat. Just the health bars dropping. So much damage being done here by SD. Going forward, and even at Haven, actually at risk of going down there is the CC as well. Gonna get caught up there by the jet propulsion, stunned out and taken out. And that was the first one, but ripped souls. Which means ever since ever since the first kill, Diablo will die a lot more starting from now on, unless he really goes defensive because they have been on offensive mode because he had a lot of those souls coming back. It's weird the way Black Soulstone works because I feel like you would almost rather... It, it's it's supposed to be an advantage, right? It's like you fill up your souls, you get a faster respawn. But I think almost everybody would rather not lose any souls and respawn more slowly. Maybe. But you get to come back really quick. Yeah, but you're so weak when you come back. You just die again. Maybe tell the development team later, rap it about it, and they will strongly hear about your opinion. There, there's there, there's this Souls meta, you keep yourself on 99, always. Of course, that's you know, kind of infeas un not no. feasible to do. No, please, Diablo is already way too strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, Even we'll have to stack that all the way back up, but he does get to rejoin uh, the fight, like you said. to hear that auto attack. Nothing animation. out of the norm, but with Diablo losing so, I think Ballistics want to intentionally pressure into the boss control a little more. They have Hanzo just warning that we have Hanzo and 16. Jeez, boss will be gone in 10 seconds around there. 10 seconds to 12 seconds. Yeah, if they don't uh, contest uh -huh. it. So it really does force the issue, uh, right? You guys have no chat. I'm by no chat, I mean false that for the gust <laughs> to disengage, but we also have bunker and lots of tools to survive. Exactly. All you got to do is get inside the bunker, and uh, gust is not quite so scary uh, look anymore. At, look how fast. Oh my scatters. god. That scatter, scatters insane. Uh, and so now Supernova have to do or die. And here they go. Uh, SDE does get kind of caught up with the bunkers right there to save him. He will pop back out into a kind of a vulnerable spot. He does go down to the false that damage. No doubt with the first casualty, but I don't know if the, the rest of Supernova will be able to hang back on. That's Haven. a 45, but nice arrows bouncing up. But the amount of heal from Tirante is actually That's surviving incredible. really well for the entire team of Supernova. I could not believe that. Haven actually very resilient. Oh, there's there as well. And yeah, the CC does come through. And Hooligan dropping here. Was that Tirande really the big turnaround factor for Supernova in that fight? Somewhat of a yes. Somewhat of a no. A uh, little off positioning from SDE. That was that was the hard part about yeah, it. Because 45, you're, 45, you're going into a long fight where you don't really have cool, like, really big positional disadvantage for both teams. Who wins overall? Five men. It's very easy to do math. Yeah, absolutely. And without the percentage damage from SDE, I mean, Diablo just uh, pretty invincible there, especially with mm -hmm. all that Tyrande healing coming through. And that's going to be a big boss push for Supernova down the bottom. Most likely, they're going to take out this keep. That was the thing. Without Tychus, Hanzo can do a lot of damage, but there's no one like the Kerosene to actually dive in and grab the kill. That was the moment where we had the boss control. Jonga looked for a stun onto Bentham there. 
Now, can Ballistics just barely hang on to their key? But Supernova, I thought they were going to overstay their welcome, but they do disengage on time. Look at this top push. Oh my god. Kurosaku really kind of doing the utmost. Up now there. the Pile of Global is coming for the team and extra crowd control. That Lunar Flare really helping the team a little bit more. Yeah, the Ballistics are looking for a fight right here, right now. Hooligan up in the front lines. Boggy healing up, so he stays uh, very, very safe. Dragon's Arrow catches no chat off in the back, but he's still in the back dealing damage perfectly safely. The, dra the uh, Lightning Breath coming through, pushing, well, seemingly, Ballistics all the way back. This is a great staging area for Supernova to start the fight. But all of the members survive. Hanzo's now here in the team fight, and White Base survived. That's the most important one. Supernova, they had to grab at least onto one. Hanzo's arrow did come. Maybe that's why they thought. Okay, Hanzo's coming into the team by very soon, but he was actually really far away. I think Supernova, they were just threatened that Hanzo was going to be uh, coming very soon. And there was an early of a bunker to buy that time for Ballistics, which I thought gave them a very good idea at the moment. Okay, Hanzo's not going to be here for... for the yeah. next five, six seconds, maybe you should engage fully. But I, I don't think Supernova made a clear call who to focus at the time. Yeah, it was only level 19. If it was 20, then maybe he could, uh, you know, play of the game. He could be there, but, you know, not uh, not able to join uh, as soon as his arrow was. Yeah, that was a big team fight. With that team fight, I think Ballistics, they were losing hard on the macro, but it's the other way. With just that team fight, of course, you can't control the boss. I think the siege camps were coming very soon. Maybe this is the time for 3 to 3s Kirisak with the one having some trouble now. Well, he's having trouble out of game, but in game, he certainly is just looking fantastic. A big change you can just see, not only on the Dahaka play, but just a global presence. Super, super good. So uh, it certainly seems like a uh, more of a strength in specifically that role for Supernova here in game two. OK, we got uh, an update. Uh, Kirisak is. Well, he was having some monitor issue where it was freezing, ah. so we are... He's reconnecting into the game. Okay. So, after... It, after if, the, if, if it works fine, we'll just go ahead. If it doesn't, we will restart his computer and then see what happens right after. Yeah, shout out to the uh, VSL support team, the unsung heroes uh -huh. of HGC, getting out there, fixing the uh, issues, whatever they are. It is right not like the other it. customer support where you says, oh, that's not part of my problem, so call this number. <laughs> and when you call that number, it's that's <laughs> I don't have the responsibility to solve your problem. So call this number. It is. No, it is not like that. VSL will solve everything. It is for actually you. their responsibility to solve the problem. <laughs> so I think we're all happy that they are there uh, to help us out. So uh, yeah, good to have them here, so that we don't have to get up and be like, hold on, guys, go over there, fix the, and then come back. Mm -hmm. Very happy that they are here to help us out. So uh, hopefully we can get that monitor issue. Uh, Repaired or fixed or transplanted or whatever we have to do in order to get it's it. It's okay. Ready they to go. have they have new they have a separate computer. They have backup computers. Ooh. They have backup monitors, keyboard and mice, backup everything. And unfortunately, it's not so backup that uh, you know maybe I could just like grab one. But no, we got to keep those here for emergency situations like the one we have on our hands right now. So, um, yeah, we can just talk about the game and. So I'll give you a good question. Okay. What's the problem for Supernova right now? Uh, why did why did they lose the team fight? Why did they lose this team fight specifically? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, Dahaka was not super there. He was kind of way up top. No, he joined when the team fight happened. Okay, I'm missing a lot faster than that. Hanzo. Yes. All right, I'll ask I'm, why I'm Professor putting you the G question. Clef. I'm giving you the question. I'm Professor Oak. Oh, and Professor you're, Oak. And okay. You're Ash. But what if I pick the wrong starter Pokemon? I know. That's why you pick Pikachu. Oh, but he's not even an option in the first one. If you get if you get the yellow version, like you just Pikachu just comes with you, right? Yeah, I guess so. But who would actually deliberately buy that? You buy Pokemon? I don't know. Oh yeah, illegal trade. My bad. Ugh, I can't believe I just admitted to that. Uh, anyway, to answer your question, G Clef, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was thinking that it might have been that No Chat got stunned in the early part of the fight, but I think the last fight that they lost so badly was because SDE got caught out, and this fight, you know, he didn't, and obviously was there to yes, and help I out. More. I don't think he even popped that Odin. No, he didn't. He was just auto attacking the whole time. I wish we had gotten a chance to go back in time and watch a replay of that, so that I could actually answer your question in more yes, detail. Maybe. Some high-quality Sky Temple sound back there. I'm glad we get a chance to like listen to some relaxing music. 
I can listen to this all day. My fireplace. <laughs> you have a fireplace? Which I don't have. I was gonna say, like... Only in my US house. Tell, tell me more America. about how you get an apartment in Korea with a fireplace. I have the digital one called YouTube. <laughs> well played. Alright, so speaking of well played, Ballistics do win that last team fight for probably many reasons. Uh, and now are pushing into a keep of their own. And there's the arrow! They open up, chase ACs, but... Do they have anyone to connect? Oh yes, they do. And they bring down the Diablo, which means there is no front line. Falset is still pushing. Look at that HP on the keep on the left bottom, on the blue. It's less than 10%. No Chai would love to push that, but they have a core called Ballistics. They want to go for it right now. Yeah, so uh, No Chai can't even commit to it. He has to come in and Odin popped. Here we go. We are going for it. This is their core call. No Chai, get blown up there. The scatter arrow pops him in the end. And you know, even Bentham now can't really join the fight. He's going to try to get in here, but Kurosaku is the next casualty. One by one, yeah, Ballistics next? are picking up Supernova off. They don't even need the bunker there, but they're going to be using all of that to burn down Supernova's core. Nothing Bentham can do, but watch in horror. His team's hopes of winning game two fall uh, around him. And that will go to Ballistics, who uh, look a little bit shaky there. Their, their uh, keeps almost went down, but in the end, they win the fight that matters. 16-59. Yeah, uh, they, they were on the rage mode after a few pauses. This game's going way too long. It just ended right here before they hit 20. Once that epic mount is available for no chat, it might have been a little bit more troublesome with the macro, because once they have the top keep and the bottom keep down, could be they could have been going into yeah. a very dangerous position of the game. So they wanted to finish it. They got the kill on the Diablo. That's, that was the start and the end. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like, you know, can, I'd like to buy a vowel. Can I buy like five more minutes in that game? A lot of potential, right, uh, for the double globals to really kind of harass and pull ballistics apart. But that time never happened. Uh, Supernova, they lose that one fight.